Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Gleason, and welcome as ESPN Classic presents the 1985 NCAA Midwest Regional Second Round matchup between Boston College and Duke. 11 seeded BC was looking for a second straight upset, having already beaten six seeded Texas Tech in the first round by two, 55 to 53. Led by high scoring guard Michael Adams, the Eagles were tournament toughened the powerful Big East, the conference that was home to number one seeds Georgetown and St. John's. Meanwhile, Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils featured a pair of all ACC performers in guard Johnny Dawkins and forward Mark Allery. Rankings, to me, are compliments, especially at uh, this time of the year. Uh, we're really happy to be ranked highly. Uh, two years ago, we were 11 and 17. You know, if we're not happy about being ranked high, we've got to be crazy. Uh, I don't think it creates any more pressure. Uh, I think that there's a lot, more, there a lot more pressure on us when we started four freshmen and we're getting beat by 20 points. Uh, we're having fun now, and I think that the, the key thing for our team is to always remember to live up to your own expectations, and the other people will just take care of themselves. Both Dawkins and Allery were first-round picks in the 1986 NBA draft. Later, we'll profile BC's well-traveled coach, Gary Williams. But now, let's head to Houston to watch Williams' Boston College team battle Duke in the 1985 NCAA tournament right here on ESPN Classic. Welcome to Hoffines Pavilion in Houston, Texas, for this 1985 NCAA Midwest Regional second round tournament matchup between the Boston College Eagles and the Duke Blue Devils. Now, let's head courtside for the starting lineups here on ESPN Classic. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hoffines Pavilion for today's 1985 NCAA Midwest Region second round game between the Eagles of Boston College and the Blue Devils of Duke University. Now let's meet the starting lineups. For Boston College, at forward, a 6'5 junior from Brooklyn, New York, number 20, Roger McCready. A tough, smart inside threat for Gary Williams. For Duke, at forward, a 6'9 junior from Scottsdale, Arizona, number 32, Mark Allery. Outstanding outside shooter has been suffering from a hip pointer. For Boston College at forward, a 6'4 senior from Bronx, New York, number 24, Terrence Talley. He's 6'4, will have to play bigger than his size today, use some quickness. For Duke, at forward, a 6'7 senior from St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada, number 45, Dan Mahar. A member of the Canadian Olympic team and a real banger inside. For Boston College at center, a 6'9 junior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 50, Trevor Gordon. Strong, muscular, and he'll need it against the Duke front line. For Duke at center, a 6'8 junior from Rolling Hills, California, number 21, Jay Phillips. A weightlifter who's really improved himself. For Boston College at guard, a 5'11 senior from Hartford, Connecticut, number 23, Michael Addo. He's the spark plug for BC and as quick a guard as you'll see. For Duke at guard, a six-foot sophomore from Falls Church, Virginia, number four, Tommy Emaker. Super smooth, over 180 assists this year. For Boston College at guard, a 6'3 junior from Brentwood, Maryland, number 32, Dominic Presley. Awfully quick and a tremendous defensive player. For you at guard, a 6'2 junior from Washington, D.C., number 24, Johnny Dawkins. Legitimate off All-American backcourt player. And introducing the head coaches for Boston College in his seventh season, Gary Williams. For Duke in his tenth season, Mike Krzyzewski. So the Duke Blue Devils, who are third seeded here in the Midwest against Boston College, 11th seeded, both won their first round games and ill planned. Memphis State won the opening game, so Keith Lee's wife, Diane, has a smile, and Keith Jr., he has what, the spoils, you'd say? Uh, to the victor goes the spoils, <laughs> and in this case, an ice cream cone. Hey, I'll tell you what, you better give that guy a scholarship right away, I tell you. He's... <laughs> Diane's a player, and Keith an All-American, too. Duke and White and Boston College in maroon. They're going to jump it. Trevor Gordon jumping with Jay Billis, and it comes down to Boston College. Michael Adams, they'll have the ball in his hands in the backcourt. He's being guarded by Tommy Amaker. Inside. Roger McCready. Straight man to man, and here we're going to see quick on quick in these backcourts today. Dawkins to Amaker. 
Duke has gone with just about the same starting lineup the last couple of years, almost exclusively. That's right. They're looking, of course, to get that center position solidified, but you've got against this uh, real pesky zone that BC plays, you've got it pretty well surrounded with good perimeter shooters. Mark Allery being one of them. Gets it blocked. That's a block and is coming down in the hands of Roger McCready, and here pushing it up is Michael Adams. He can penetrate. Sometimes he's out of control. When he's not, he's tough. And Michael Adams puts Boston College in front. Michael Adams altering that shot in the air, starting off right where he ended up the other night where he hit the big shot to put BC in this game. Leading score for the Eagles at 15.3 and Amaker picks it up. Night defense for BC and Mahar goes up and misses the shot. Inside is there's Billis on the inside getting the ball slapped away from him and that's a real job by Stu Primus. Going to see it on the inside. Might have been Presley. Yeah, Presley got it and I think it should have been BC's ball. It was right off Billis' knee. Johnny Dawkins wide open hitting outside Johnny Dawkins at 21 against Pepperdine an alternate on the Olympic team and of course the man that makes Duke Blue Devils go and here you have Amaker trying to stay we said that uh, in the first game Andre Turner may be the quickest guy in the game but I don't know we'll get some push on that for Michael Adams Trevor Gordon goes inside so BC going to their big men immediately and the foul is called on Billis his first person Ball going down inside on Gordon. Really a powerful player. Billis stays right with him, and those two fellas are going to make a lot of contact today. Junior college transfer from Gloucester Junior College in New Jersey. Trevor Gordon from Philadelphia. He's played only five years of organized ball. He's come on pretty well this year. John Clarity, Jim Harvey, and Jimmy Clark are the officials assigned by the NCAA today. Interesting comment by the officials in regard to the play that uh, some people may or may not have seen in the first game. They feel that this rim is a little loose and not having the same amount of pressure that uh, normal rims have of the breakaway rim. So maybe that's the reason it acts a little bit of the sieve. Trevor Gordon misses both free throws. Mark Allery, Amaker decides to go the other way. 2-2 Two -two the score. Just the start of things. The Duke Blue Devils tied for first in the regular year in the ACC. Johnny Dawkins hitting from the other side. Gordon loses to Billis. And there is Allery with the short jump shot. And he is an outstanding shooter, as you pointed out. 59% amazing from the perimeter. He is. He can go out there 18, 20 feet. And of course, he's been down with that hip pointer, which is a very painful injury. Amaker is all over Adams. They know that's the man that they have to stop. Straight man to man here by Duke. McCready trying to work his way in the lane and does and draws the foul. Good move by Roger McCready. Second leading scorer, nearly 15 a game. Alabama's jumped up ahead of VCU. VCU the, could sleeper maybe. The SEC looking really tough. Mm -hmm. We saw Kentucky put on a great show yesterday. Alabama still hanging in there. Auburn have all, has already worked their way to the regionals. Georgia got knocked out today by the tough club of Illinois. Here's McCready. Makes the free throw. Went to the same high school as Chris Mullen of St. John's. Mark Allery committed the foul. And we have McCready at the same high school as Mullen. And we have Dominic Presley at the same high school as Johnny Dawkins. So we're teammates. That's right. Pressure by Boston College, and they'll put a lot of that on throughout the game. Could be a 10-second call here. It's going to be very close. They got it across to Amaker. Terrence Talley in the backcourt, and now BC goes back to the 2-3, and Tommy Amaker misses short, and the rebound by Terrence Talley. Good and there's pass. there's a fast break inside. Oh, beautiful Dominic pass. Presley on a terrific reception of the pass, and a basket and pressure on again. 6-4, Boston College leading. That pass by Adams was sensational because he was able to freeze the defense by looking one way and throwing the other. Dawkins trying to get the ball inside. Loose ball. Duke still has it. Mark Allery pumps over Adams. Has a big height advantage. Here's Jay Billis goes up. The basket counts in a foul. Now, one of the things, Dick, that BC loves to run, and with Michael Adams, they get out there in a break very well. You see Allery throws up a brick. Billis gets it, and with that power inside, even with Gordon grabbing his arm, with all of that weightlifting that Billis has done, he was able to power it up inside. And what's going to happen? BC's going to have to stay at home a little bit because Duke is pounding the boards pretty well with their three big men. Gordon commits the foul, and here's Billis. Leading rebounder for Duke, nearly six a game. Bowers into the ball game as Gary Williams sees right away he needs a little bit more beef in that front line. 
Troy Bowers, a sophomore from Roselle, New Jersey, number 55. Michael Adams, an orthodox shooting style, and that was an orthodox shot, but there's Troy Bowers. Bowers, of course, will be remembered for having that shot against Syracuse with, at the buzzer that went in and then rolled out, spun out against Syracuse in a heartbreaking loss of the Big East Tournament. Adams staying right with Amaker. So quick, and you see that BC uses their press, then they drop back in that 1-2-2 zone. They get it inside to Jay Billis, under the basket, stepped on the line and turns it over. BC, fast break and that great pass by Michael Adams. Now, I talked about him freezing the defender. You see how Michael Adams' eyes were looking straight ahead to the right and threw that ball over to his left. Great play. McCready to Presley. Presley got the basket. And the Eagles have it with an 8-7 to seven lead. Nearly four minutes gone by here in the first half. Roger McCready puts up a wild shot. Last touched by... Duke by Amaker, so BC still has it. BC has thrown up a couple of weird shots so far. Well, they really have. It's an aggressive type team. You see Duke in the man-to-man, -man, but BC actually has a quickness advantage on them at almost every position, and there's the second foul on Allery. Allery going after the ball, fouls Terrence Talley, and that will be the third team foul against the Eagles or against the Duke University and coming into the ball game is David Henderson a big story in the game against Pepperdine because they call him the sixth starter he had 22 points to pace Duke coming off the bench I think that's not unusual Henderson throughout his career has been able to come off that bench and put up uh, big numbers and this may be a better matchup actually for Duke right now they get it inside Another unusual shot, but good quickness. Dominic Presley, and the foul will be against Boston College. I think it's going to be against Presley coming over the back. This is an aggressive BC team inside, although they're not big. That's good help by Danny Mahar, who, as I said, is a real banger on the inside. 8-7, to seven, Boston College in front. Under 16 minutes remaining. Henderson working the ball against Terrence Talley. Henderson's one of those fellows that can play the second guard position as well as move up in the forward spot and a great leaper. Good Dawkins defense. Has a pass a shot deflected by Dominic Presley. Loose ball and Boston College has it. They're a pesky team like UAB. We saw find ways to make it tough for you. Johnny Dawkins holding up Michael Adams. Now we've got a switch. Dawkins on Adams. It looks like he wants to go ahead and take his man one-on-one. -on -one. Mahar switching off. Behind the back pass, Roger McCready misses. Good pass by Adams, although it was fancy. McCready was open. That was a called play. Michael Adams pulling on his shirt, wanting a little clear out with the screen. And BC executed it well. They just couldn't score. And here's that 1 2 2 zone. BC stays in it all the time. Amaker puts Duke in front. The score had been 8 to 7 for a while, but Tommy Amaker hits. Fourth time leading yeah. assist man at Duke. Now, we, what we have here is. Uh, He's saying to keep your hands off the ball after a shot is made, and basically the official warning all the players on the Duke team. Georgia Tech taking the early lead over Syracuse. That's the other matchup between a Big East team and an Atlantic Coast Conference team. And here, Duke is leading by one. Timeout. Larry Finch, who is assistant coach to Dana Kirk at Memphis State, has been to the Final Four, scouting the teams here. They'll face the winner. The work is never done for a coaching staff, particularly an assistant coach. You know, no time to go ahead and celebrate that victory. You've got to get ready for tomorrow's game. And what's so tough, Dick, because I used to be in that position myself, is you never know which team you're scouting. You know, one time you get a sign to say, well, now I think so-and-so is going to win. But you can never do that. You know, just when you get your game plan right, somebody else comes along. So I imagine in this case, Dana Kirk has both of his assistants working the game, one taking one team, one taking the other. While Dana's out making another commercial. <laughs> Little shot at the end. Never hurt anybody. Whistle. Terrence Talley going to the hoop. Now, BC starting to turn it over with... Uh, and, and Gary Williams doesn't like that. Stu Primus has come in the game. Traveling was called against Terrence Talley. Primus, a terrific athlete, having his best scoring year, a 6'3 senior from Lynn, Massachusetts. Oh, a dangerous pass. Cross court under the other team's basket. And Weldon Williams, a junior from Park Forest, Illinois, has come in for Duke. He's wearing number 40. Dawkins putting on a fake double team. Smart player gets it out to Amaker, who sets it up. Surprising Weldon Williams would come in this early in the ballgame. There must be a reason for it. Mike Krzyzewski have him in there for a specific role. Gives Duke some depth in his plate, some quality time this year. Billy's got Billy King over there on the bench. If he wants to use him for defense. Amaker open. This is his time and trying to save it. Dan Mahar 
Dawkins inside, and there's Weldon Williams. That's what he had him in the game for, to catch a perfect pass from Johnny Dawkins. He played sparingly the last two years. Did Williams, and it's 11-8 in favor of Duke, under 14 minutes to go in the first half. Duke staying right with that man-to-man. -man. Primus, good pass. Inside to Roger McCready, and the basket is going to count, and a foul. So credit the basket. Boston College fighting back to 11 to 10. And there's McCready showing his ability to go on the inside despite the fact that he gives up a lot of size. Pretty tough call. There was a case with Mahar again, had his hands up. Might not have got to the spot in time. McCready, the foul after the basket, which counts. First foul on McCready, who has four points. And it is still Duke ball. There's that very dangerous pass, Dick. Throwing the ball cross court under the other team's basket. How has Duke done against pressure like this during well, the year? Well, normally very well, because you've got Amaker and Dawkins are on the on the end of passes that come in bounds. Double team on Mahar. They get it to Johnny Dawkins, bringing it across. As you mentioned, a couple of quick guards. Amaker going in, and a whistle, and Duke will go to the line and shoot. So they got it down court in a hurry. Now, that was Bowers committing the foul. And as I pointed out, Dick, what happens when you press a team like Duke? They go ahead and execute their offense right off the pass inbounds because normally you've got the two guards almost like in a fast breaking situation. Good pass by Dawkins over to Amaker. Bowers with the body gets all of Tommy Eric Amaker. He goes to the line. Jay Billis is back in the ball game for the Blue Devils. And Weldon Williams, who was in briefly, scored a basket, goes out. What we might be having over in that Duke bench is saying, hey, Gary Williams is going to go to his bench, going to go deep. Don't want to get anybody in foul trouble, and this game is going to be one that uh, is going to really expend a lot of energy because Boston College is going to force that ball all over the court. Great thing about Tommy Amaker is his assist to turnover ratio. As Mike Krzyzewski says, values the ball as well as anyone he's seen. A very key ingredient. 13 to 10, Duke leading. On the year, Dick only has 63 turnovers, has himself 181 assists. Not bad. Steele, Dawkins, three on three. Johnny Dawkins, Dominic Presley doing a good job. Goes inside, uh, Henderson. Dawkins gets the rebound and scores, so good persistence by the Duke Blue Devils and Johnny Dawkins, who scored more points than any other junior in Duke history. Now has four points in the ballgame and a five-point lead for the Blue Devils, their biggest lead. Good overplay defense, close to five seconds. Foul on Tommy Amaker, however. That'll be the fourth team foul against Duke. Tommy Emmaker had the good defense. He had Adams picking up his dribble. Adams normally keeps that dribble alive. Coming back in the ballgame is Trevor Gordon and Troy Bowers, who had come in earlier, goes out. And you're going to see Mark Allery coming in for Danny Mahar. So both coaches liberally using that bench. There's Mark Allery, averaged 16 a game and had 16 against Pepperdine. Now Duke with a little foul trouble goes to his zone for the first time. 2-1-2 two, two with Billis in the middle. Deflection, Dawkins. Not a good pass. Loose ball. BC has it. Oh, good and play. It, I would say. And Allery winds up with it. Boston College back quickly on defense. But Tommy Amaker going to the hoop. Loose ball coming down in the hands of Dominic Presley. Here's Michael Adams with Billis there. And Adams. McCready follows it up. Adams had his shot changed by Billis's presence inside. We're looking at two teams. Steele nearly. Oh, he kicked away. the ball. That should have, that was kicking not the ball. Not kick the ball. This Henderson is not did. Soccer. That's right. Henderson kicked the ball and got away with it. It should have been a kicking violation. That wasn't an accidental hit. He knows it too. Michael Adams commits the foul here, and it looked like BC had jarred the ball loose from Duke, and then of course they went for the corner kick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a good play by David Henderson, a fellow who uh, came up the hard way. Skip Barry has come in the ball game as Georgia Tech's lead over Syracuse at the half now is one. Skip Barry's a freshman from Nashua, New Hampshire, number 33, and a strong outside shooter off the bench for Gary Williams. And I think why we're seeing him in there is Duke showed that zone. There's Henderson missing from Henderson outside. Missing nothing. outside, and here comes a four-on-three break. Adams in time inside of Primus. Barry scraps for it, and they call traveling against Skip Barry of Boston College, Mike Krzyzewski, a disciple of Bobby Knight looking on, and Gary Williams, he'll get upset in a hurry. Well, <laughs> I don't think there's any team in the country that goes after loose balls the way Boston College does. I mean, if it's on the floor, they all go for it. Allery getting it out to Billis against the pressure. They want the ball in the hands of the two guards. Here's Dawkins. 
very open. Nobody hitting him on a cut. Henderson working against Trevor Gordon. Amaker, DC right in your face against that zone. Mark Allery missing. Famous had it, and it's last touch by Duke. Boston College has it, trailing by three, 15 to 12. Gary Williams, one of the best young coaches in America. Without question, had an outstanding uh, career at the University of Maryland. Left there and uh, won a state championship at Camden, uh, New Jersey High School. Then on to American U, where he had outstanding teams. And, of course, at BC, he has been top-notch. Here's Skip Barry with a good outside shot. It's As a stationary said, shot. That's right. And, and there was good coaching on Gary Williams Park. Saw the zone and put his own players in the game. Duke's lead cut to one. 11-15 remaining, first half. What's interesting here also is neither team has a big contingency of fans, so the players have to generate their own enthusiasm. Long down. Johnny Dawkins coming down with it. Dominic Presley has done a good job on loose balls. Stu Primus. Oh, nice shot. Not a good shot to take percentage-wise. Nobody under hits it anyway. And the full court pressure. Barry at 6-7, giving Allery some difficulty. And now Duke brings it across. Johnny Dawkins. Oh, this game play. is turning into an end-to-end run-and-gun ball game that we didn't necessarily expect. Well, Gary Williams loves to press, and it's good to press against a team. But if you've got a Johnny Dawkins going to get the ball in the open court area, it's really playing into Duke's hands. Blue Devils by one. Ten and a half to go. First half. Adams. Michael Adams has scored two points so far. Leading scorer McCready with six and a bunch half two for Boston College. Barry looking for that shot. And Barry misses this one. Johnny Dawkins coming down with it. He has Henderson. He faked the pass and hits the jump shot. David Henderson, you mentioned, he accepted his role as a sixth man. Johnny Dawkins, really one of those players that seems to have so much energy. And he ran a 428 mile in preseason practice and seems like he can go all day long. Skip Barry has a shot blocked by Mark Allery. Here comes Duke with a three point lead. Their biggest lead was five. Allery has it inside and will be fouled and go to the line. No, they're going to call walking before the foul. All right, traveling called as. Dan Mahar is going to come in the ball game, and a whole bunch of substitutes, including Weldon Williams of Duke, will bring you up to date when we come back to Hopines Pavilion. You're watching NCAA tournament action from 1985 as Boston College battles Duke in the second round of the Midwest Regional on ESPN Plus. Some good defensive inside play by Duke started this down court. There you see Mark Gallery going up with a good block on Barry. Taps it away. Dawkins with his super ball handling ability. Watch this little crossover dribble through the legs here. Makes the pass over to Henderson who catches Allery and Allery spins and gets called for walking before the foul. Pretty good move to me. Boston College. There's Terrence Talley in there. Stu Primus. Roger McCready. Troy Bowers and Michael Adams. Said Weldon Williams is in for Duke. McCready misses the shot, and also in the ball game is Kevin Strickland, a 6'5 freshman from Mount Airy, North Carolina. It was good range. Strickland, a good shooter. Of course, uh, you don't want freshmen to have to come in the ball game cold and put up a shot from the outside. Not a good pass. BC still has it. Going to the hoop is Michael Adams. Oh, he makes those all the time. It's unreal. How does he know where the hoop is? Because I don't think he's looking at it, Billy. That shot this year that he made against Syracuse, running out of bounds, one of the great <laughs> shots in the history of the game. And the traveling called against Duke, so the full court pressure pays off. BC can take the lead if they score. Now here, Duke thought they had to steal. Michael Adams, as usual, coming up with all loose balls. <laughs> now watch this shot. There's no way he wasn't even concentrating on the basket, makes it anyway. BC can take Unreal. the lead here. 19 to 18, Duke leading, winding down to nine minutes to go in the first half here in Houston. Dick Stockton and Billy Packer. BC to beat Texas Tech on a shot by this man, Michael Adams. Two seconds to go. Inside of McCready, and McCready is fouled. That'll be the 15th foul against Duke, and BC will inbound. Kevin Strickland on the reach in foul. McCready is so tough on the inside. When you look at the BC team, you know. They don't have any size out there, but they all have pretty good size, and so everybody goes to the boards well, and they're awful quick inside. Pass goes out to McCready. Interchangeable parts, you might say, about that's right. And that's how they play. 
They play that tight 1-2-2 uh, two, two zone, and then they interchange uh, everywhere on offense. Adams, turn run over Amaker, kind of posted him up. You ever see a 5-10 man post up another guy? <laughs> Michael Adams has a lot of confidence. So Boston College leads 20 to 19. Their first lead since early in the ball game, and now the Eagles will be. It's Terrence Talley. Yeah, Terrence, Terrence Talley grabbing on to Danny Mahar, but again, a very dangerous pass thrown across court under the basket. Talley's first personal foul, and that's the 16 foul against BC. One more, and they are in the penalty. Talley from the Bronx. Well, BC is going to foul a lot, Dick, because they're constantly going after you. That's not a problem for Gary Williams, though, because he uses his bench very well. Phillips was wide open under the basket. Nobody saw him, but BC will let you go ahead and try to do that against them occasionally and use their quickness to pick the pass off. This is not the quickest team in there for Duke right now. Henderson got away with one. Dawkins hits the shot. He had Adams running by him in his face, but Johnny Dawkins, great open court player, a little bit of everything, according to Mike Krzyzewski. Uh, Johnny Dawkins can do it all. He can pass the ball, handle the ball. There he's playing some pretty good defense on Michael Adams, who's trying to take him one-on-one. -on -one. Adams fires it up, and Mahar gets the rebound. 21-20 Duke. But sometimes they say that Adams will just go out of control or else put up the shot where he shouldn't. That was not a good shot selection for Adams that he just took there. Dawkins misses. Henderson gets the offensive rebound. Duke has the muscle edge, but Mark Allery is fouled, and he'll shoot two. I think it's going to be Jay Billis that came across the lane. Was it Billis or Allery? Billis came flying out of the pack, too. Coming into the ball game, here is Dominic Presley for Boston College, and Michael Adams sits down. See that pass on the inside? Good sit down. It is Allery that goes across the lane, and Billis got hit after the play. Allery, a good free throw shooter. Mark Allery, as you mentioned, had been bothered by a hip pointer, hadn't practiced last week. Second leading score for the third straight year for the Blue Devils. Mark Allery had a great year last year. Seems to me that he's worn down a little bit this year. He looks a little peaked. Of course, that hip pointer will put anybody down for a while. A very painful injury. He pointed out much of the enthusiasm because of the fans of UAB and Memphis State have gone, and you have to generate it yourself and in a very important game for both schools. Exactly. Feel like you're almost out in a script preseason scrimmage game as far as the environment is concerned. Seven and a half to play first half, and the pass thrown past Bo uh, Bowers by Primus, and Duke has the ball. That was, a, that was a case where Bowers just didn't have an opportunity to get planted. Now, here's that press. Very difficult to throw over this press because they're so quick. Henderson brings it across for Duke. Blue Devils lead 23 to 20. Now you see them drop back into the zone. It's tough to do to press one way and then drop back in the zone without getting beat. Dawkins putting a fake. Now Dominic Presley goes up, and the foul will be against Duke University. It's on Johnny Dawkins. And slowly getting up. Is that Roger McCready? Yep. Looked like he twisted an ankle there. Slow getting up. Johnny Dawkins penetrated one dribble too far. When you're going against that 1 2 2 zone, you're not going to be able to take it all the way to the hoop. Skip Barry will come in from McCready. Here's the foul again. And we see Johnny Dawkins going one step too far. No question about a charge right on into McCready. Duke back to that man to man defense. They tried to go zone a little bit. Stu Primus. It's a man to man team. Dawkins is on Stu Primus now. Not as quick, obviously, as Adams, but he's a good athlete, muscular as you can see. Under seven minutes to go. Barry is guarded well by Jay Billis and a steal by Dawkins. Here he goes. Oh, what a layup. Chipped up and in by Dan Mahar for Duke University. There's a big turnover by BC, not paying attention. Ball goes out of bounds, Duke will get it back. Johnny Dawkins exploded on this last steal. Now watch him take off right here with that first step. He just took off, goes in for the layup, misses the layup, had good extension on it, but missed it. And that's a good tap in. Dawkins has eight points. He got credit for that basket. It was not tipped in, I don't believe. Oh, I don't think so. Dick, yeah. you sure, huh? They're going to credit to Dawkins? Had to be a tap in. Because Gary Williams wanted uh, goaltending on it. That's a charge. Henderson gets away with one. Dawkins with a high arc short. And they're going to call the foul, and uh, Dominic Presley called for it. So it was a tip-in by Dan Mahar. Danny Mahar got it. Good hustle on Mahar filling the lane. 
Boston College wants to call a timeout. Things have gotten a little bit away from them as you look at Alabama with an eight-point lead over Virginia Commonwealth in the second half in the West region. And we'll be back to Houston, Texas in a moment. Well, there's the Boston College Eagle and the Duke Blue Devil. And what are they fighting over, Billy? Texas flag, state yeah. flag, big star, lone star. That's right. And if they win here, they go on to Dallas. So they're going to have another flag to fight for Be next the week. Champions of Texas. <laughs> And next year, the NCAA Final Four Championship in Dallas. Held in Dallas. Duke has the rebounding edge over Boston College, which is not a real surprise. But it's solid as the Blue Devils are up by five. 6.26 to go in the first half. You know, when you look at BC's stats across the uh, board on the year, shooting under 50% as a team, uh, rebounding only at a two, per, two uh, rebounds per game better than their opponent, turning the ball over. 408 times compared to 402 assists. So you wonder how in the world does this team win a game? They win just by outscrapping everybody. Johnny Dawkins has nine points and four rebounds from his guard position. Mack in high school, the home of Austin Carr. Dominic Presley, as you mentioned, a reunion today. They played in the same backcourt. Of course, Austin team. Carr was a fair NCAA tournament player, holds just about every record standing I out there. I think, yeah. <laughs> Notre Dame could have used him yesterday against North Carolina. 27 to 20 Duke with a seven-point lead their biggest of the ball game 610 to go Adam, Adams in the game he can just feel the intensity pick up in regard to the way everybody's moving their feet good defense by Henderson Eagles trying to generate some offense they led 20 to 19 and so eight straight points run off by the Blue Devils during this run good defensive stand right here tough man-to-man -man on that ball as Mike Krzyzewski and Bobby Knight's disciples have taught and getting inside and missing the layup is Dominic Presley and they're going to call the foul against Boston College. There was a case where Dominic Presley not having the size had to strain a little bit too much to put that ball up and couldn't get it. He's on the baseline now he's got it here just not quite big enough to get it up. Danny Mohar battling inside and is grabbed that time grabbed by Terrence Talley should be a foul on Talley. Danny Mahar going to that line we talked about him being a member of the Canadian Olympic team. He's often uh, been challenged by a lot of people of being a little bit too rough, but uh, he asks for no quarters and he gives none. I can, he probably one of his biggest moments in his life had to be the day in the World University Games, Dick. Remember when the Canadian team, the Olympic team, beat the United States contingency up at the World University Games. They won him out of the semifinals, then they went on and won the gold medal. Yeah, we were there. Bill Wennington uh, was also a member of that team, uh, That's right. I believe, and Jack Donahue was the coach, the That's former right. Holy Cross mentor. Missed the free throw. Here comes the pressure. Oh, took his eye. Dominic Presley took his eye off the ball. Good pass by Michael Adams. Excellent pass. He had it set up perfectly. Was able to freeze the defense again. BC just not executing right now. Loose ball. Good job by Billis. Should be a jump up and situation. It points to Boston College. So the Eagles. No, they're going to go to Duke. The arrow pointing in Duke's direction. Duke will get that ball back, and a good job by Billis to go ahead and hit that floor, Dick, to go ahead and uh, prevent the ball from turning over to BC. You've got to go down on the floor with BC. If you're standing around reaching and bending over, you're in serious trouble with that ball club. Five and a half minutes to go, and Henderson will inbound. Back in the game. Now, Bauer's back here. Look for Duke to break somebody long one of these times. Oh, nice job by Dawkins. He is so quick. Does he remind you of Dave Bing? Yes, he does. Slithering through, Bing a, an inch taller, but Dawkins plays taller than 6'2". Yeah, he's a great leaper. Amaker has Henderson standing in one corner, Dawkins in the other. Go inside to the two big men. Billis is inside. Trying to attack this zone by putting everybody down in the baseline. Nice fake by Amaker. Got fouled after the shot. From behind by Terrence Talley. And for Tally, that's his third foul. So he had the foul before, and this makes three for him now. That puts Tally down. That hurts Gary Williams because a pretty solid ball player. Emmerker went up. Tally got him from the backside. There's Bowers with a rebound, but a little bit too late. So Tally sits down with three personal fouls. He hasn't scored. And in the game is Mark Schmidt, a 6'2 senior from North Attleboro, played in 14 games. Gary Williams going to the bench a little deeper than he anticipated in his first half. Yeah, he'd like to have Tally out there. Gary Williams, of course, uh, statistically, he goes about six, seven deep with fellas that can go in and have a double-figure game. Very good free-throw shooter. 
And that's what you want. We, we talk about in the NCAA tournament, delay games and free throw shooting. You love to have guys like this in your backcourt. Biggest lead of the ball game, and the Duke adding to it now. Ten straight points for the Duke Blue Devils. Boston College has not scored in three and a half minutes now, and we have five to go in the first half. What got him on track was when Michael Adams tried to go one and one, kind of took him out of their offense. Gary Williams wants him to get back in it now. Schmidt, 21. Primus, number 30. Bowers comes out, and right with him, Jay Billis. He's giving no quarter out there. Nice Loose job. Ball, and here is Amaker. Gets the ball away from Adams, and it is 31 to 20. The Blue Devils opening up an 11 point lead, and Gary Williams wants a timeout. You're watching NCAA tournament action from 1985 as Boston College battles Duke in the second round of the Midwest Regional on ESPN Plus. Back ready for the second half. Duke, as we pointed out, 35% shooting percentage, Billy, but they had 13 offensive rebounds, turned them into 15 points, so they're making the total possessions pay off so far. They're doing that, and of course, uh, not a great free throw shooting team by any stretch of the imagination, but we're 13 or 14 in the first half, so that's right on the money, 92%. Michael Adams has eight points, but McCready was the high score for Boston College with 10. Going inside is Terrence Talley, and... They're going to call the offensive foul against Terrence Talley, and that'll be his fourth personal foul. Not a good start. No, Terrence Talley had a good open lane to the basket, but Jay Billis, who's having a fine game, and Danny Mahar on the inside held their ground. There it is, Billis holding the ground, no question about the foul. Stu Primus comes in, and Talley immediately sits down with 11 seconds gone by in the second half. There's that press again. Dropping back into the 1-2-2 zone. Dawkins with 12 points, the high score. Amaker has eight, Allery six for Duke. And they didn't. They went back to man-to-man. -to -man. So Gary Williams changing things here, the start of the second half. Bad shot. Danny Mahar puts it up, and there is Adams looking down court, and Amaker is there with the interception. Super Good hustle. Steal. You're, because you're, you're looking at uh, Dominic Pressy, who can really run. And he was on the fly pattern. It just uh, they had no Doug Flutie throwing it to him. That was a problem. <laughs> 13th Boston College turnover. And so Duke with the ball on a five-point lead. Trevor Gordon going out. Little hand checking. Allery up on top. And they're going to call the foul away. That's, that's going to be on Gordon. Hand checking. And he was, uh, he was doing it all the way. Did not score in the first half. Matter of fact, only played a few minutes. And Gary Williams needs him in the ballgame and needs him to be aggressive, but not to pick up a cheap foul. Tally and Gordon, two of the starting frontliners for Boston College, drew blanks in the first half. Now we have the 1-2-2 zone. Of course, on an out-of-bounds situation, you'd expect that. Dominic Presley, of course, plays the point in the 1-2-2. And then he'll drop down inside when they go to Billis and the other big man. Allery hadn't been able to get his jump shot off. He's over on the proper place. He's over there with Adams. Ought to be able to shoot over him. Mahar getting over to Allery and good hustle off of Allery. And Adams stayed with him. Now, there's the second time today that Allery has not caught the ball in, a, in what was a very catchable play. Might be caused by the fact that he hasn't been able to practice due to that hip corner. He normally has good hands. Minute 20 gone by, and it's still a five-point lead. No scoring yet in the second half. And an interception as Trevor Gordon just threw the ball into Amaker's hand. Gary Williams kind of looked at that pass and said, what in the world was that all about? <laughs> there's, there's a difference between a, a maroon and a white jersey, that's for sure. Foul is on Adams. That is his third. So Michael Adams has three fouls now. That's a very severe problem for Gary Williams because he needs him in there to go ahead and set the tempo. And Michael Adams is a guy is the big basket man for Boston College and always has been. Here's Troy Bowers coming in now for Trevor Gordon. Gordon goes out with two fouls and did not score. Bowers scored two earlier in the ball game. Gordon took an unusual route back to the bench. He's, he went right down the sidelines. <laughs> Shortest distance between two points is a straight line and he uh, he went otherwise. So here's the man they call the cement that holds the team together. Tommy Amaker from Falls Church, Virginia, averaging eight a game, has nine points now. Well, I talked about that D.C. connection. It's been very good for Duke University in so many schools. You, know, you look at Georgetown with a great uh, contingency out of Baltimore and Washington on that club. Certainly the team still to beat in this NCAA tournament. 39 to 32, and Amaker is a perfect six for six from the free throw line. 39-32, here's Boston College pushing it up as Adams. Presley. Here's Primus against the big man, Allery. 
And a jump shot by Roger McCready. Gets Good his own rebound. rebound and gets the basket. Good hustle by Roger McCready. And there's a case where Billis was out of position, and when he had to come down, McCready was able to go ahead for the offensive rebound. Five-point game again. You'd think Duke would have a bigger lead than just five as Amaker throws up an air ball, and here comes Adams. He's got Presley down court, and Michael Adams takes it all the way, forced it up, and oh, that Presley gets the layup. No walking was It should have been a walk. It should have been a walk. He had the ball in his hand and caught it. And here's right the down pressure. Full court pressure, and it's off of Billis's hands, and Boston College, amazingly, Billy, can get a basket and come within one point of Duke. Okay, we're going to see the play. Adams going nowhere. Gets off one of those um, unbelievable shots. Now watch this. Ball goes up. Caught his own caught his own play to Dominic Presley, and I think that should have been a walk. <laughs> well, I don't know how he does it. Gary Williams' Eagles are within three, and they have the ball early in the second half. David Henderson averaged over 12 points and four rebounds per outing during his 128-game career at Duke. While in Durham, Henderson was a superb sixth man on the 1984 and 1985 NCAA tournament teams before becoming a starter as a senior, as Tom Meese explains in his Vintage Sports Center report from 1985. Every good basketball team needs a good sixth man. In today's game, five players just aren't enough. The man who can come in off the bench and give his team a needed spark is worth his weight in victories. For the Duke Blue Devils, that man is junior guard David Henderson. Through Duke's first 13 games this season, Henderson was averaging 11 points and four rebounds, highlighted by a 21-point performance at Virginia on January 5th. Henderson also ignited the Devils' win over Washington on January 12th in Durham, playing both forward and guard. David Henderson is one basketball player who knows his role. The thing that I try and concentrate on in coming in the ball game as a sixth man is just contributing and not trying to do things out of out of my characteristic and just blend in with what's going on out on the court. And if I'm fortunate enough to have a, a good contribution towards the team, then I'm, I'm pleased. He's so versatile, he can take any position on our team. And when the opening is there, David will go. Oftentimes, Henderson will come off the bench to give Olympian Johnny Dawkins a rest in the backcourt. Dawkins knows he leaves the court in good hands. David Henderson, to me, has got to be one of the best six men in the country. He comes in and, you know, not only does he put points on the ball for us, but he also plays great defense, you know. He's the type of guy that, you know, if a player's, you know, really hot or something, you can put Henderson on him, and you can uh, be almost assured that the player's going to slow down somewhat in his offensive performance. So I think Henderson's a plus for us both offensively and defensively. David Henderson, a junior economics major at Duke University, is one big reason why Duke's basketball economy is booming. Henderson returned to Duke as an assistant coach in 1997 before being named the head coach of the University of Delaware in 2000. There he replaced another former Coach K disciple in Mike Bray. Later we'll flash back to Michael Adams' days in the NBA. And when we return, we'll have more of Boston College and Duke in the 1985 NCAA tournament on ESPN+. Plus. CBS exclusive coverage of the NCAA championship, which moves to the regional semifinals, will continue on Thursday. And here is the lineup Thursday night with the score 39-36 Duke, 9 o'clock Eastern time. You will either see Georgetown against Loyola and had a great battle between the Ramblers and the top-seeded Georgetown team. Some of you will see Memphis State against the survivor of this game between Duke and Boston College. There'll be a later game as well, and we'll tell you about that. Illinois against either Georgia Tech or Syracuse, the winner of that game, and they're playing now. 39-36, Michael Adams and Creighton DC open. to within one point. Duke had led by 11. Boston College scored six straight. And now it's a one-point ball game in favor of the Duke Blue Devils. Just a, nearly three minutes gone by in the second half. And again, Gary Williams changes his defense, goes to that 1-3-1 trap. Really throwing Duke off balance here in the second half. Tommy Ermaker picks up that dribble. That could have been costly. Three minutes gone by now. Double team on Dawkins. Driving in Allery with a nice reverse play. layup. Eight points for Mark Allery. Went all the way on in through the baseline. I didn't think he'd be able to make it. Normally, BC really stopped you down there by drawing a charge. Straight man-to-man -man by Duke. They showed both the man-to-man, -man, a little zone. Primus gets it inside, and getting the foul is Dominic Presley. Good pass by Stu Primus. Excellent pass by Primus on the inside. And again, using that quickness, everybody on the BC team can post up. 
Mahar got a piece of the ball, but I believe that the foul is going to be called on Dawkins from behind. They call it on Mahar. They did. Now. I thought he had the ball. His first. After this free throw, we have a couple of scores for you. Dominic Presley on the line. This is the first. Alabama against Virginia Commonwealth. 62 to 57. Tightening up. Runs and huh? tied against J.D. Barnett's VCU club. You can't count that man out at any time either. Hey, hey. Of course, the Sun Belt having uh, only VCU left now that UAB has been knocked out. Johnny Dawkins will take that All to the, the way. Oh, what a shot. Bounce and a foul. Johnny Dawkins, after Presley made one of two free throws, Bowers fouls. Johnny Dawkins. And a big play for Duke because they were sluggish for the uh, He had Bowers right on him. Used the rim beautifully there to help ward off Bowers. Bowers hit him with the body. And just as we saw Michael Adams slither to the basket not too long ago, great play by Dawkins. And Bowers with two fouls goes out of the game. And Tyrone Scott, the freshman from Waterloo, New York, comes back in the game. Bowers has scored two points in the game. And here again is Johnny Dawkins. Game high score right now with 14 points. Again, Dick, so tough for these players to generate enthusiasm because we've down to about 3,000 in the crowd, most of them uh, impartial observers and kind of like playing in a Sunday game on a playground. And Very so much tough. riding on this game, yeah. too. Dawkins now 15 points, five rebounds and five steals. 44 to 39, four shot in there by McCready, nothing coming down, and there's Billis with the rebound. I thought Allery got away with a foul on that play. They go inside to Allery. Again, Allery just not in game condition, not Adams. catching the ball. Knocked away from behind by Amaker. Good play by Tommy Amaker from behind, so Duke with a five-point lead in the ball. <laughs> Gary Williams over there asking that referee if he swallowed his whistle. <laughs> Thought that Adams got hit from behind. There's a lob. Weak side lob inside Dawkins in a crowd. Has his Good shot lock. blocked by Tyrone. Scott and Jay Billis with the follow-up. Now with seven points in the ball game. Nine rebounds for Jay Billis as well. So he's done his job at center today. And just when BC makes a run, then Duke comes back and makes a run. And Allery got hit on his shoulder. Seven-point lead for Duke. Primus goes in. Nice. Battles his way. Super quick, maybe the most improved player on BC this year, other than the underclassmen. Five-point lead, Duke coming back, Dawkins finding Phyllis. Good pass, good basket and a foul, and that was the pass that made it all happen by Johnny Dawkins. And Tyrone Scott just relaxed, fell asleep, and Dawkins pushing that ball up the court. Now you watch Scott, he's just relaxed, and he doesn't realize there's somebody coming from the weak side. Gets there too late. Not only does he not have good position to block the passing lane, but he commits the foul. So Billis goes on the line, and if he hits this free throw, will match his season's average of 10 points. And his rebounding so far in the ball game, we told you he leads the Blue Devils at nearly six a game. He has nine. He's been solid, and he has 10 points. Good solid situation, and hey, David Henderson coming back in the ball game. You saw him test his ankle during the halftime discussion. He had a sprained ankle, and David Henderson, who went down and came out of the game in the first half, has scored only two points, but Mike Krzyzewski's got to be pleased he's back. And he's going to be on premise, so he'll be tested early. McCready, Allery double-teaming him. Good move inside and a foul. Good hustle by McCready. So we have seen Primus and McCready, who are not overly big, muscle their way inside. So they're amazing how they can get away with it here at uh, even... Well, that's a final now. Alabama wins, so the SEC keeps another team alive, and that ends the Sun Belt's reign this year. And Georgia Tech opening up to a 12-point lead against Syracuse, so another Atlantic Coast Conference team moving along. Here is Roger McCready. Make three-point play, so both teams trading three-point baskets. Back to five for Duke in the full five court. Five seconds. Pressure. Mahar gets That's it five. In. You're right, five seconds. See, if you throw it in with four seconds. Well, it, here's the key, Dick. No matter when you throw the ball, it the count keeps going until the ball is touched in bounds by a player. So you can throw team. it in before five. And oh, then sure, you can throw it in at three seconds. If you throw it high enough, it doesn't come down and touch somebody. It's still five seconds. Adams will inbound for Boston College. Try to come within three. Up to meet McCready is Dan Mahar. Amaker on. That's a great challenge for the Duke guards against the quickness of Michael Adams. Today. Overplaying is Allery on Roger McCready. Stu Primus, basket counts and a foul. Oh, whoa, whoa, can't be a basket. Can't be a basket. 
They, yeah. they first said the basket yeah. counted. That was the first signal. Yeah, it was a it was a reach in foul right there. Right there. Yeah, and it was not on the shot, so it's going to be pump. taken out of bounds by BC. And just when it looks like Duke is making a little push, here comes BC right back. And what they're doing now, they're going inside with their quickness, posting up uh, three different players. McCready. And there it goes. And Roger McCready has 17 points. Again, McCready and Primus taking it right on inside. 49-46. They're like that gum you were talking about That's stuck right. on your foot. That's the way BC is playing in this game, and we have a lot of time to go. Nearly six minutes gone by. Dawkins misses. And there is Allery muscling for the loose ball. And inside, the foul against the Duke Blue Devils. Mahar on a push. That'll be the third foul against Dan Mahar. And there is Jay Billis getting set to check back in the game. Mahar goes out. Billis got a rest. Danny Mahar pushed off, picks up his third foul. As we pointed out, he's a guy that goes inside and does an awful lot of banging and does pick up a number of fouls. We're going to check the number of fouls he has. Well, in any case, Duke's going, to come, four. Duke's going to come back with uh, Henderson in the lineup. This is not an unusual lineup for them. Four fouls on Mahar. Again, posting up well inside. Presley Great. going all the way in, and it's 49 to 48. And Boston College on the pressure now, the trap. They let up on it now, trailing by 49 48. Amaker in the lane. And oh, a big nice. basket for Duke. Crossover dribble. 12 points for Amaker. Dawkins has 15. Millis has 10, but Duke has all he can handle in this game from BC. I think we're going to see Duke have to go back to the zone. McCready will go to the line, and he's fouling. You're so right about how BC is working their smaller men with quickness inside. Exactly, Dick. They're just posting up inside. McCready's doing a good job inside. Primus is doing a good job inside. And they haven't been able to stop either one. So I think that you're going to see Duke go back to the zone. They just can't handle him inside. Looks like Henderson might yeah. have twisted that ankle again. Yeah, he can't go, so he's out. Skip Barry and Mark Schmidt. Boy, Schmidt had the big turnaround steals in the first half to go ahead and get BC coming back. Mahar is in the ball game, playing with four personal fouls. So they're going with Mahar with four as McCready misses the free throw. In a three-point lead for Duke with 13 and a half minutes to go. Barry, Skip Barry, the freshman, waiting to come in the ball game and will probably come in for Roger McCready, who's at the line. It might be a good move for uh, Gary Williams because I think that we're going to see Duke have to go a little bit of zone because they can't stop anything inside. And, of course, Barry, the good outside shooter. McCready goes out. He has eight points this half and 18 in the ball game, And he is the high scorer in the ball game. Pressure. Good steal. Loose ball, and Duke still has it, but they're really making the Blue Devils work just to inbound the ball. Well, you know what the problem was there? Boston College had too many guys with a chance to make the steal. 51-49. Another deflection. One. Mahar surrounded. And Barry knocks it away. Adams with a jumper. Shouldn't have taken that shot. Yep, he was too Billis quick with open. it. And Billis down court. And the stuff. There is where the aggressiveness of Boston College turns against them sometime in well, the rush. Gary Williams will go ahead and, uh, and take his chances on that. He delivers. So oh, there was a solid screen that time. That was Scott who threw a forearm shiver. Now, Adams really took a bad shot there. You see everybody battling for the rebound. Johnny Dawkins didn't realize at first that Billis was wide open. And here comes Dominic Presley with that great speed, almost in time to make the steal. But Tyrone Scott on the foul, and the pass was it touched? No, I don't think so. Neither official saw it. I think it's going to stay. Oh, 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 no. Neither official I, saw I, that I, play. That was a guess. I didn't see any deflection. That was a guess. Neither official saw that one. Uh, Boston, they, uh, they Jay Billis, it. I don't believe Jay Billis touched it. White's ball. Oh, it's going to be Boston College. Oh. <laughs> Mark Allery and, and, and uh, Michael Adams were both standing side by side. Well, I don't think any one of the three officials saw that play. 53 to 49. Seven minutes gone by here in the second half. Duke has led virtually all the way, but they turned the ball over six times in seven minutes to let BC come back in this ball game. Well, they, they are turnovers, but I think they're really steals created by BC. You know, they're not mental mistakes. There's Barry, a good shooter. In and out, but gets his oh, rebound. No block out. Knocked him out. That was Danny Mahar just let him go right to the hoop. And it's a two-point game. Duke leading 53-51. You think a timeout is in order for, by Mike Krzyzewski? Well, I don't know. I, I think their ball club likes the way the floor is spread out. 
It's just that BC, as usual, will not quit. Putting a lot of pressure on. Allery in the lane. Bad shot. And he pushes. Allery having a very uh -huh. poor ball game. And let's see. Now we've got the officials again questioning which way Austin it's going. Austin Collins and, ball. You know, you're right. But the point you made yesterday in Salt Lake City is when you haven't worked together, you have that hesitation. Yeah, tremendous indecision on the part of the officials. Boston College. What's his play? That almost goes in. And Adams pass. Here's Tyrone Scott. Back to Adams. Adams will fire it up and tie the game for Boston College. Amazing. He tried a long pass that hit the rim and got the ball back. Jay Billis inbound. I thought that pass was good. You know, that's the type of play Michael Adams will make. <laughs> He'll do anything. 70-foot pass. Dawkins driving in. Mahar throws it up and is fouled. 53-53. What a comeback by Boston College. They were down 31 to 20. The last time they had the lead was 20 to 19. They crept within three, but Duke had been in charge. And now Mahar is on the line. The foul was on Scott, his third. He'll come out of the game, and Troy Bowers will check back in for Gary Williams. And Danny Mahar, not a real good free throw shooter, shooting 68%. And Gary Williams with those revolving door <laughs> substitutions, only he knows what they mean. You know, <laughs> there seems to be no rhyme or reason, but it works. Here is Mahar. Danny Mahar looking good. There you see those uh, seasonal averages. Duke is outstanding from the line, 18 of 19. Now 18 of 20. Primus gets the rebound, and Boston College can take the lead. Adams. He hits it and goes down on the floor. <laughs> Boston College leads 55 to 54. And we want to welcome the viewers who saw Georgia Tech defeat Syracuse 70 to 53. Well, that's a shocker to me in, in the margin of that particular game, even in though the, it was played in Atlanta. Well, in the East region, and that was a game between the, the Big East and the ACC, and we've got another one here, and this is quite a battle. Boston College trailing by as many as 11 in the first half, have just taken a 55 to 54 lead against Duke Blue Devils. Jay Billis is on the line to try to give Duke the lead again, and BC has just been incredibly pesky for the favorite Duke Blue Devils today. If it were not for the free throw shooting by Duke University, they'd be out of this ball game because BC's creating so many turnovers out here for Duke. They've had a hard time getting into any kind of offense. Dick Stockton and Billy Packer reporting from Hoffines Pavilion in Houston, Texas. Michael Adams has been the spark plug. Troy Bowers underneath, and now you get a glimpse of why BC has forged in front of this ball game by two points. 11 minutes and 22 seconds to go in the second half. Johnny Dawkins has been a savior for Duke to keep him in the ballgame. Well, Dawkins has been somewhat taken out of the offense with the press, too. you got to remember, he's working so hard to get the ball up the court that when they get in a half-court situation, that's a foul. And Michael Adams has committed his fourth personal foul. Now, that's a serious problem. There's Bowers going up. Good timing. Billis jumps too soon. Bowers keeps himself under control, gets a good basket. But Adams has four fouls and has to go to the bench. He's replaced by Dominic Presley, and so this is where Boston College has to maintain their momentum without Adams in there. Well, he is he is about as pesky a ball player as been in college basketball throughout his career. Of course, as a freshman, he made that big run and been outstanding ever since. 14 points for Adams. You're looking at Tommy Amaker, who has 13 right now. Johnny Dawkins with 15 is the high score for Duke. Roger McCready has 18, leads the Boston College Eagles. You know, if you could probably put together a highlight film on Michael Adams' greatest plays <laughs> that last about, you know, let's say two minutes, you'd think he's the greatest player in the I history know, of I basketball. Know. I mean, he's done some unbelievable things. Zero against Texas Tech in the first round. Mark Schmidt inside low to Bowers. Bowers turn shot. And Duke defending against BC and the Eagles is with a smaller team, but quicker have moved inside, taking advantage of the press and quickness inside. Regain the lead. Amaker gets fouled twice. Story on the foul trouble, which could be a factor, particularly for Michael Adams. He's the man that makes BC go. Terrence Talley and Adams each have four, and Dan Mahar has four for Duke. 
One of the things that really impressed with uh, Tommy Amaker and Dawkins today, when you beat the BC Press with your dribble, they're coming from behind and they have great quickness. So you not only have to be looking at the court of what's developing in front of you, you have to remember that there are guys coming behind that can steal the ball. Need eyes behind your head. Amaker is on the line. He's played a solid game. In fact, the Duke backcourt has been outstanding. But as you mentioned, Johnny Dawkins kind of disappeared, not out of his own uh, doing. Well, you go ahead and press full court, and one of the advantages, and uh, go back to the days of Johnny Wooden at UCLA, they just take you out of your offense with the full court pressure. Georgetown does the same thing. That's the first miss by Amaker. He's 9 of 10 from the line, and Duke has been superb from the free throw line. Dominic Presley, man-to-man -man defense for Duke right now. Everybody posting up inside, and that's been the problem for Duke. They can't handle people inside. Remus going in, tipped up by Barry, misses, and Billis gets the rebound. But Boston College just says, let's go inside. That's They're doing right. it every time. I mean, they have a very short ball club, and they just go inside. Great move by Johnny Dawkins, who throws up a brick. Here comes BC, leading 59 to 58. Here is Mark Schmidt, who has been good off the bench so far. Another Scoop incredible inside play, and that's Dawkins. Remus. Primus just created a play there, had nothing, was off the ground, and had to just fire up a shot, pick up a lucky foul. McCready, Presley, and right here, Primus, just challenging Duke inside. I really think, uh, Dick, and I've mentioned this before, that Duke, because of the, the quickness advantage to BC, has got to think about going to a tight zone and just say, hey, BC, we've got to slow this game down a little bit because they're penetrating inside at will. Because Boston College is not really an outstanding outside shooting ball club other than maybe Skip Barry and Adams when he's on. That's right. And with Adams out of the game with four fouls and Barry sitting on the bench right now, it might be a pretty good time to throw it on him. Here's Stu Primus. He's shown flashes, and we saw a few of them a little while ago. And again, very little cheering out here. So the players, uh, and I would say this is a big advantage to BC because they play so hard and all the time that it probably is uh, a better situation for them than it is for Duke. They create their own enthusiasm. Gary Williams thought that maybe the season was over with the loss to Syracuse in the Big East. They've come back, they got the NCAA bid, beat Texas Tech, and now lead Duke 61 to 58 in what is the biggest lead for the Boston College Eagles as they trap half court with under 10 minutes to go in the second half. Good job right there by Jay Billis because Johnny Dawkins has picked up his dribble. Now you see the zone packed back in. 1 2 2, Billis, Billis walks. The lead. Bowers got a hand on it, and they're going to call the foul on Bowers. But Bowers uh, did get the foul, but Billis walked before he got a chance to get that shot off. Maybe we'll see it right here. One step. Maybe not. Huh? Maybe not. But Bowers did get a piece of that arm. Third foul on Bowers. Troy Bowers, whose cousin Boo played at American University for Gary Williams when he coached there. That's right, his first uh, major star there. There was a case where Gary Williams has to be upset that the ball could be able to get thrown right down the center of a 1-2-2 zone. Jay Billis has had an outstanding game, particularly on the boards for Duke, where they have struggled from time to time this year. You know, we've talked about BC's uh, great uh, history in the NCAA tournament of late. You go back to Vic Bubis when he took over that uh, program at Duke University and did such a great job taking him to the Final Four with Mullen and Heyman and then back the next year with Jeff Mullen, who's now taking over the head coaching job at the University of North Carolina Charlotte. 61 to 60 in a timeout. Boston College 61, Duke 60 with nine minutes and 44 seconds to go. At halftime, we pointed out how Duke had the lead by five despite 35% shooting, but a domination on the boards. But all of a sudden, Boston College, even with Michael Adams on the bench with four fouls, has just challenged Duke inside using quickness against the bulk of the Blue Devils. Well, they really have it. It doesn't look either as, uh, as though David Henderson can come back into the ball game. He's on the bench with a big ice pack, uh, as you can just see him right there in the corner of the screen. Big ice pack on his leg. The fellow who has had a very low game is Mark Allery, and we talked about his injury. Slowed him down. He hadn't been able to practice. Sometimes when big guys can't practice, have a hard time getting ready in the game. The he, hit has, pointer. he has played very poorly. Bowers going up over Mark Allery, and the foul is on Allery. That'll be number four on Mark Allery, and as you pointed out, he has averaged 16 for the year and has just counted eight points so far in this game. Right, and he has not been real aggressive on the boards, has not been able to get off his shot. And again, BC goes right inside against Duke, and they just wearing them out inside. 
That's Jay Billis right there. They do look a lot of, it's amazing, you know, when they came to school as freshmen, Allery was actually the more physical looking. And now Billis on that weight program has really built himself up. We understand that they had changed an earlier foul call from Allery, so now he has three, and that is the correct number. So that's important. Mahar has four fouls, and he's had that number. Bowers hits two free throws. It's 63 to 60, nine and a half to go. And the pressure by Boston College. They've changed their defenses effectively today. And here they are. They, they go ahead and trap half court. There again, nobody able to take advantage of it because Boston College is so quick. 63 to 60, Johnny Dawkins shot, no good. Bowers crashing the boards. That's gonna be coming back to Duke. The arrow pointing right down to Duke. And again, though, Duke really in a, in a slump here. And what's amazing is that Gary Williams with Michael Adams on the bench, you figured he was gonna have some problems during that spell, but since Adams has gone out, the BC has actually increased their lead. The arrow pointing to the Blue Devils and Allery will inbound all the way out now to Tommy Amaker. 63 to 60, Boston College. As we get closer to the end of the game, and that was a kick ball, uh, we talk about the delay games of the respective teams. Well, and you're talking about a quickness advantage for BC, and you have uh, Michael Adams, who's been able to sit down now and get a good rest. Even though he has four fouls on him, he has been able to rest during this period of time. Amaker with a fake on Bowers. Tough shot. Allery gets the offensive rebound and goes up with it, and it's uh, Mark Allery in double figures finally, 63-62 to 62 BC. Now, Duke may start thinking about pressing themselves a little bit. With Adams out of the ball game, not a bad idea to press a team that likes to press you. Winner of this game will face Memphis State. They won an overtime one-pointer against UAB. Bowers, baseline, wild shot. Billis gets the rebound, and now Duke can take the lead with a basket here. Amaker against Tough Smith. Shot. Not a good shot. Allery trying to keep it alive, and McCready over to Primus. In the crowd, Primus stays with it. Goes right inside. Schmidt. Now you have two men on the ball. Somebody's wide open. Stu Primus misses. On the other side, Dominic Presley misses. Two shots that were not good by Boston College. And Duke again with a chance to move in front with under eight minutes to go in the second half. And here you see BC dropping back. You know, they are really tough to watch because they scramble. They're taking bad shots sometimes. There is an alley -oop. Uh, Allery couldn't there. do it. Again, that timing is just not there for Mark Allery. Pretty good pass. BC, of course, they picked that up in a hurry when they saw the ball in the air, to their credit. Schmidt, ball knocked away. Loose ball. Nice hustle by Amaker. And in the ball game. Oh, and the King in the ball game, and they're going to call the foul against Stu Primus of Boston College. If it's a loose ball, whether it be on the floor or in the air, BC's going to be somewhere near it. Good job by Schmidt just to get it back. And here comes Primus across grabbing the arm. Billy King, a 6'6 freshman from Sterling, Virginia, and an excellent defensive player who's developing as an offensive performer, did not see action in the first half. Well, we're looking at a fellow who has had real problems for the foul line, only shooting 30% on the year. Well, just like in the, in the UAB <laughs> game, I mean, everybody holding their breath on the Duke uh, team, wondering if the ball is going to go ahead and bounce back to him. Heavily recruited out of Parkview High in Sterling, Virginia. Can put the Blue Devils in front, 7.31 on the clock. Team fouls, both clubs in the penalty, and they're reverting to form, missing the free throw. Tie score, Boston College with Stu Primus. Barry and King is playing them tight, and it's a good matchup for Duke. Yeah, I, I think King realizes that in the scouting plan that Barry is an excellent shooter, so he's going to go right out there on him. Nearly a steal by King. Barry gets loose, line drive shot. And they're going to push off. A foul, pushing off against. It's going to be Barry, but Barry. I think it's going to put King on the line again. Skip Barry from Nashua, New Hampshire. And on the sidelines with four personal fouls. 14 points is Michael Adams, and if you're Gary Williams, the score is tied, 7-11 to go. When do you think about bringing the little guy back? Well, I think what we're going to see is as long as Gary can have Michael Adams uh, sitting on that bench with the lead. Well, <laughs> now, listen, with that lead... And maybe he thinks a tie score is a lead. Well, I think that, you know, he's right now in some serious trouble. you got Billy King hits it, so it puts the B.C. behind, and you got to say, how much longer can I wait? Gary Williams doesn't want to wait at all, so he brings Michael in. Primus goes out. He scored eight points, and has been a good factor in the second half for the Eagles serve. King has made two out of three. 
Oh, good rebound. Loose good ball. Rebound. Barry stays with it. He is 6'7 and strong. And now Boston College trailing by one. 64 to 63. Seven minutes to go in the second half. Michael Adams with four fouls back in there. Fresh Michael Adams. Oh, what Over a bad throw. pass. Dominic Presley overthrew. Roger McCready and the turnover and coming in the ball game now Dan Mahar he has four fouls so two players with four personals back in there as Billy King goes out he did a good job well now you think about delay game too it's a little too early for either team to go into it but with both of these clubs having good guards good lead pass Billis to Mahar tipped away by he Presley's out of bounds. Yeah, Dominic Presley, but the Good. quickness, just anticipating that. Play. Well, you know, you're, you're looking at a track man. You're looking at a, uh, a, and Presley, you're looking at one of the fastest basketball players as far as running speed probably in the country. Was a track man in high school. Still plans on doing a little track up at BC, but he just ran that pass down. Good job by the official to be in position to be able to see that ball on the end line. Duke and, by one. And Duke's saying, we're not going to play anymore against the zone. So what we're probably going to see is a 1-3-1 trap. And that's what they've got out there. Yep. Gary Williams not going to man-to-man. -man. He's going to go to the 1-3-1 trap. There's another look at it from a different angle. They've got big Tyrone Scott in the middle. Skip Barry. Now they're running Michael Adams here, running the clock down. This is going to be a game of, like a chess game the rest of the way. 6-10 on the clock. You watch it. Second half. Duke had a five-point lead at halftime. DC came back to take a three-point lead, and now the Blue Devils are up by one. Good, Mark Mark good defense. The good Mahar defense. Mahar trying to keep it alive does. The and ball was tipped. thrown that away. No, no, the ball was tipped. DC touched it on the inside. An official just gives a <laughs> sigh of relief. Hey, we got one right. That's right. <laughs> He's trying to say they haven't been perfect. Well, I, I think it's been very difficult yeah, for these officials to go ahead and work with fellas that they have not worked with all year long. It, you know, court coverage, having a feel for your teammate. Uh, how, how do you think it'd be if they went and mixed up the uh, NCAA basketball teams to say, OK, let's go have a tournament. And you guys work with a whole new group of teammates. Probably wouldn't be as smooth as the way these officials are working. <laughs> Probably not. Matter of fact, you can guarantee it would not be. Amaker had a wide open shot, didn't take it. Down to 5.30 on the clock. DC has really given Duke all they can handle in this game. Short, short shot by Mahar misses. Mahar tried to save it into the hands of Barry. Boston College has it, so Duke couldn't capitalize there. Oh, and good side, Roger McCready is fouled by Tommy Amaker. And we'll go to the line, and a chance to put Boston College in front. Stu Primus comes back in, and Terrence Talley also Talley sent in by Gary Williams. Right, Talley's been on that bench a long time. Now Gary Williams getting a very experienced crew in there. And rested. That's right, a rested crew and an experienced crew. Talley with four fouls has not scored in the ball game. He's back in there. Mark Schmidt goes out, and so does Skip Barry. So deft substitution by really... And we've said it before, you know, Mike Krzyzewski is certainly one of the best young coaches in the game today, but Gary Williams, I don't think, has had the kind of material that some of these other good young coaches have. There's the foul story. Of course, Gary always in the center of uh, controversy in terms of coaching changes, too. A lot of talk about him going different places. Providence. Of course, he's uh, quite, quite a hot commodity. Almost a steal the... by Adams. 65-64 Boston College. We've had eight lead changes, and Roger McCready has 20 points in the ball game. There's a case, Johnny Dawkins. You know that he's about ready to open up with one. Amaker to Dawkins. Good position, right of the key. Not Dawkins there. misses, but there's Mahar keeping it alive for Duke. And Gary Williams wanting to push off and might have been right. Good pass back out by Billis. BC by one. Amaker, long short. range is short, and there is Tyrone Scott. Here's a three on one. Adams challenging Amaker all the way. Gets the basket in Boston College. Again, with a three-point lead, and Michael Adams, the hero of the win over Texas Tech, has 16. And BC battles themselves all the way in this ball game, out of it at a couple of occasions. There's Here's another ball. bad Off play. The hands of Dawkins, and here's Adams with Amaker back. He lost it, just carried it with him out of bounds. He had down court Roger McCready, but he decided to take it himself. But as you said, Gary Williams knows what Adams is all about. Most of it is good. That's right. For more information on our classic games, trivia, upcoming specials, and the ESPN Classic program schedule, 
Go to ESPN.com, keyword classic. After starring at Boston College from 1981 until 1985, Mighty Mike, Michael Adams, was able to carve out a long and prosperous NBA career with his foot speed and his knack for hitting the long ball. His three-point shot was so deadly, Adams drilled a remarkable 949 from outside the arc over 11 NBA seasons. At 5 feet 10 inches, Michael Adams is smaller than your average NBA player, but size has nothing to do with a sweet jump shot. His style has been compared to that of a shot putter. Let's face it, it's awkward looking, but effective. In fact, once, just once, someone tried to change his shot. Damn, my high school coach was trying to do it, but uh, he, uh, he did it for two days and he just left me alone because he figured I wasn't going to make any that way. So uh, you know, I just have to know how to shoot it in the pros. There's no uh, you know, trying to uh, change a shot once you get to this level. I mean, either you can play or you can, I think. Averaging nearly 15 points and six and a half assists per game during his NBA career, Adam's approach was entertaining the Hoops fans everywhere. And the guy deserves it. He's been playing great, and he played great besides the threes. He really did a great job. On January 23rd, 1989, Adam set an NBA record for making at least one three in 79 consecutive games. That's the most satisfying one. I think the second one, you know, just to get that down and uh, give, us the, give us an advantage, uh, makes you feel good inside because, uh, like I said, any record, uh, it's all right, but it's, not, it's no good when you don't win. Adams earned all Big East honors in his sophomore, junior, and senior seasons with the Eagles. Now let's head back to Houston for more of Boston College and Duke in the second round of the 1985 NCAA Tournament on ESPN Classic. We're back here, 67-64, Boston College leading Duke with 419 remaining in the ballgame. Dick, you made a real good point there in regard to Michael Adams. If you're coaching a Michael Adams and he's going to make some of those incredible plays, he also, because he's going to try to make the impossible, is going to make some plays that are just, you say, why, Michael, did you drive for the basket? Now, here you see Michael pushing the ball up court, very rested, drives, penetrates, jumps up in the air, has a lot left, puts it right in the basket. Super play there. Ten seconds later, he kicks one out of bounds. Duke will inbound. Johnny Dawkins, who had 12 at the half, has 15 now. He has missed nine of his last ten from the field. And here's uh, Duke bringing the ball up court very slowly. They've got to start pushing it up here. 67-64. This could be a key possession. Dawkins misses, but a foul is called. And it's against... Mark Allery, I think, of Duke University. Let's check and see. Well, nobody else called it. One official called it, and everybody looking around, they're not sure who the foul's on. Mike Krzyzewski said it was your call. What was the foul? Why not on offense? Allery with his fourth foul, four on Allery, and going to the line now. Boston College with a chance to open up their biggest lead of the ball game, five, with 4.03 to go, and Tyrone Scott is on the line for the Eagles. Scott, uh, not a good free throw shooter. And hadn't had that much playing time this year, but he's been very valuable in this game. Dawkins has missed nine of his last 11 shots on the field, Billy. Scott drills that one. Five points for Scott. Only had, he only went to the foul line eight times all year prior to that shot. One out of two. Rebound Billis of Duke. 68 to 64. DC has its biggest lead. We have under four minutes to go in the second half. I can't believe that Duke has taken so much time to bring the ball up court. They've got to start putting some things up. Amaker for the jumper. A big shot by Amaker has 17 points. He's the Duke high scorer and brings the Devils to within two. And again, Duke uh, has got to start thinking about pressing a little bit, too. Even though they're just up two, you figure here's going to be BC with a delay game, four corners. And that time that Michael Adams was out of the game has to make him feel very good at this point. That was critical for Boston College. With Adams on the bench with four fouls, they hung in there and kept the lead. Adams. Tough shot. <laughs> Is there such a delay game with Michael Adams? <laughs> well, you know, he's got the experience, too. He's been there before and so tough to handle. He's hit his last four shots, 18 points for Michael Adams. It's 70 to 66 again. Allery almost lost his footing. Three minutes to go now. And Duke under the gun now against their Big East opponents. Oh, not a good pass. Allery. Lucky. 
with a short <laughs> shot. Sometimes you need a little of the luck. That was really a lucky play because BC really had the pass diagnosed perfectly but couldn't get to it. And Duke calls timeout. Mike Krzyzewski's Devils are down by two now. You're watching NCAA tournament action from 1985 as Boston College battles Duke in the second round of the Midwest Regional on ESPN+. Plus. Sometimes there are baskets scored that are not worked on in the practice, huh? Well, this is one. You can see three BC players thought that they were going to have an opportunity for that interception. Instead, Mark Allery just held his ground. Here's Michael Adams going down inside. And they're in the four corners right now, and Michael Adams would have to be one of the toughest guys to guard. We had Andre Turner in the first game from Memphis State, who is very difficult in that situation, and then a Michael Adams. How about let's have those two guys taking a race from one end of the court to the other with the ball? Well, let's start awarding gold medals at the Olympics when we do that. The yeah. arrow points to Boston College, by the way, and timeouts remaining. BC has two, and Duke has only one. Down to two, and it doesn't it seem like Duke has uh, gotten into a, a, a stupor. They really don't have a lot of foot quickness right now. They might be worn down. BC looks much fresher. BC can do that to you. That's right. Gary Williams has used his bench liberally as usual and very expertly as usual. And he brings in fresh people like Terrence Talley. Duke is shooting 34% for the game. Boston College is at 50. That's the way they were at the half for the Eagles. Well, things haven't changed that much except the score. Duke led by five, and now BC is up by two. Primus, pretty good ball handler, picks up his dribble in a dangerous spot. Tough pass. And oh, Adams, Adams, good what play. a catch. Good play on a bounce. What a catch. Short hop by a shortstop. That's right. Here he is <laughs> working on Amaker. 2-12 to go. Primus, Dawkins, Amaker is on Michael Adams, penetrating. And Adams. Oh, we almost hit it out, and one. they're going to call the foul against Michael. No, it's against what? Duke. I'm sorry. The signal looked like it looked was like against, a charge. Yeah. But it and had to be Allery. That's his fifth. He's fouled out. So Mark Allery, who has been, you talked about the hip pointer, but a bit of a disappointment, 12 points in the game, and not the outside shooting threat he had been most of the time. Well, and he didn't really have much zip today. Uh, and I've noticed, Dick, that it seems like this year he has not really been as crisp in his movements as he has in his two previous years at Duke. The other players with four fouls, including Michael Adams. He's a key man for the Eagles. Allery, beside 12 points, at six rebounds. And Adams on the line. 67% free throw. Shooter misses that first one, and he knew it. Came up way short. 2.08 on the clock. Boston College leading 70 to 68 now. He's been Look terrific down the stretch. 90% in the clutch. He is 10 of 15 from the field. Uh, Johnny Dawkins bringing the ball up court slowly. Duke had taken a lot of time. Two minutes to go. King is nice. in the ball game, and Jay Billis. Oh, good block. Side, Looked like a good block. a foul against Boston College, and Billis will shoot two. 71 to 68. Tyrone Scott with his fourth personal. Scott going up. Thought he got all ball on that play. He thought so too. Boston College snapped a four-game losing streak when they beat Texas Tech, and they're trying to make it two in a row with an upset win over Duke as Skip Barry comes in the ball game and Tyrone Scott goes out. So the manipulations continue on the bench by Gary Williams. And Billis, who has not been that effective in the final moments of the line, 58%. Came up short on that one. Billis has had a good game today, but right now you have to start dropping those free throws. Could get it back to a two-point situation, however. Long, 7 of 10 from the line with that miss, and Skip Barry, who's pretty strong in there for BC. That was a big, big miss, because it gets it back in a situation where you need two possessions in order to go ahead and get in the lead. So they spread it out again to the Eagles. Duke University has to really aggressively play the ball now, because pretty soon they'll have to start going to a following situation. Adams, watched by Johnny Dawkins. There's a five second. This is five seconds here. Should be Off five. Off his foot and Primus right near the center court. 120 to go. Primus in the corner, trapped by Mahar and Amaker. McGrady gets it out. Good job. They look like a close call for Boston College. Now, when you take that ball into the midcourt area, it's a new five second count. But when you bring it back out again, it stays at five. There's an automatic foul by King. Billy King fouls. Terrence Talley will go to the line. 71 68 107 to go and big free throws coming up for Terrence Talley into the game again Tyrone Scott 
goes in. Skip Barry goes out, and they're also going to bring in Dominic Presley. Well, how about this? Adams go Adams going out of the ball game. Good defensive. Well, move. I think, yeah, you're going just strictly for the defense here. You've got Tally on the line, an 80% free throw shooter. You figure you have maybe a four, maybe five point lead. It's it. Throw. Big one. Terrence Tally, and that's his first point of the ball game. He had early foul trouble and is playing with four right now. Now you've got a situation where if BC hits this, Duke almost has to foul the rest of the way. And a five-point lead for the Eagles, 73 to 68, their biggest lead. They have made up 10 points on Duke, which had a five-point lead at the half with one minute to go. Johnny Dawkins penetrating and gets the bucket. He was ice cold this half. Boy, and Stu Primus almost committed the foul, which would have been a bad thing to do. And a timeout called by Duke, and that's their last timeout. So Duke has used up its collection of timeouts. They trail 73 to 70, 55 seconds to go. We'll be back to Hop Hines Pavilion. You're watching NCAA Tournament action from 1985 as Boston College battles Duke in the second round of the Midwest Regional on ESPN+. Plus. Boston College leading 73 to 70. Duke just used its last timeout. Billy, you surprised? Yeah, I'm surprised for two reasons. One, it cost them their last timeout, and two, it enabled Gary Williams to be able to get Michael Adams back in the game. You, if you're Duke, you don't want to go ahead and press him with Adams in the game. Had they not called the timeout, he could not have gotten into the ball game. But Adams is back in there along with Skip Barry, Stu Primus, Roger McCready. Pass to Primus, a lot of time going by. Terrence Talley also in there, and there's Adams, there's and that's the man BC wants on offense. Yeah. Using up the clock, 45 seconds to go. They're gonna have to foul, and King fouls Terrence Talley just as he did before, and Talley hit both before. Well, there's a case where if you're gonna go ahead and foul, might as well foul and not allow that much time to go off the clock. McCready has 20, he leads Boston College. Adams with 19, Amaker and Dawkins with 17 as you see Tyrone Scott come back in and 17 for Amaker and Dawkins and Billis 15 and Larry fouled out Gary Williams telling his club no fouls really where BC made their run in this game is when they start punching it inside this free throw. 73 to 70 40 seconds but Duke needs two in a hurry Johnny Dawkins who hit the last one shot. Too hard off the glass, but gets the ball. Fires it up again, short again, gets the ball again. And Johnny and Dawkins fouled. is fouled by Terrence Talley, and that'll be number five. He's out of the game. Johnny Dawkins on that first one really threw up one a long way. He may just be worn down. You know, BC with their substitutions had really come after him and may have worn Johnny Dawkins down because he usually doesn't throw up that kind of a brick. But he battled for some rebounds. So Talley fouls out of the ball game. Adams back in. So now you have a, a very good free throw shooting ball club out there with Barry back in the ball game also. All right, Stu Primus was charged with the foul and not Tally. So Tally remains in there. So we'll correct that. Terrence Tally stays in there. Primus is fouled. There's a timeout by BC. Trying to get organized. That's exactly what they want to do. One timeout left for Boston College, but they're in control 73 to 71. 29 seconds left in the ball game. And Gary Williams sends him out. Dawkins having a chance to bring it down into with one. At one time, Duke had an 11 point lead. Duke kind of looks tired, don't they? They, you no. know, they're, they're players. They don't have a sweat up. They haven't been able to. They've been playing hard, but they, uh, they look like the game is uh, just starting for them. Long, Billy King gets a piece. Not enough. They Boston got a foul. College has it, and a foul against King. Roger McCready is foul. It'll be one and one. 27 seconds to go, and a. A couple of big free throws, and that's what Duke has to do. They've got a foul at every turn. Well, I think we'll see that the rest of the game. And as we pointed out in the first game today, uh, I think one of the major rule changes you'll see in college basketball next year is that now Gary Williams will have that opportunity to take the ball back out of bounds as opposed to shooting the free throws. Maybe you get the you get one and the ball out of bounds. Roger McCready shooting one and one. Billy King, three personal fouls. 
Eight other. Nine from the line, but McCready misses a big free throw, and Duke can tie it up with a basket here. 73-71. 20 seconds to go. You can watch the clock. Amaker working inside. Dawkins with a fake on Primus, he and gets they foul. foul. A foul on Primus. So Dawkins will have a one-and-one -and, -one and a chance to tie the game. 14 seconds remain. That was a good fake, and you wonder why Primus was so concerned about stopping Dawkins that far out. I mean, you got to take your chance still up two. You just don't commit a free throw. Here you see Johnny Dawkins, pump fake. Gets him up in the air. Johnny Dawkins was going to pass off on the play. One-and-one. One. Big free throws for Johnny Dawkins. Six of seven from the line. Short. Loose ball. Oh, no, no basket. No basket. And a foul Billis against on the a Duke push. Blue Devils. Jay Billis. And now Boston College, 13 seconds to go, can really come close to icing this ball game. But Johnny Dawkins never got that one up to the basket. Again, I mentioned it looked like he was tired. Tyrone Scott will go to the line. He's a freshman from Waterloo, New York, and finds himself in the second round of the NCAA championship and a chance to ice the game in what would be a big upset in this tournament. One for two from the line so far. Hits a big first free throw. That's major free throw, because now Gary Williams wants to make sure that nobody fouls here. Duke will have to take that ball the length of the court, and remember, Dick, they have no timeouts left. So they cannot stop the clock. 13 seconds remain. Boston College beat Texas Tech on a shot in the waning seconds by Michael Adams. One free chance. throw by Tyron Scott, 74-71. Johnny Dawkins to Amaker. Amaker looking for a three-point play, gets two of them back. They the can't call time. time. They three cannot seconds, stop the clock. Two, one, the game is over, and Boston College has done it. Gary Williams has brought the Boston College Eagles home again with a gutty victory over Duke. The final score, 74 to 73. For Billy Packer, this is Dick Stockton saying so long from Houston, Texas.